Conversations with Selwyn. I just want to begin this podcast by offering prayers and love and support to the bereaving families in Charlottesville and prayers for those injured physically and traumatized emotionally by the horrific violence. We have to remember the families of State Troopers Lieutenant H.J. Cullen, who was 48 years old, of Midlothian, Virginia, and also Trooper and Pilot Burke Bates of Quinton, Virginia, who died in the helicopter crash while monitoring the violence taking place on the ground. Our hearts go out to the mother and family of Heather Hare, who died at the age of 32 while protesting against the racism. Let's also remember to pray for the healing, the strength, and the restoration of hope in the heart of young DeAndre Harris, who was surrounded and beaten mercilessly by white supremacists. We have to ask, where was God while all of this was happening? And I believe the answer to that question is that Jesus was there with the broken, with the mourning, with the dying, with the suffering, and he's there with the families right now. Um, while thinking about everything that happened over the weekend, I wanted to get some scriptural guidance, something that I could pull from and draw from that I can apply, not to reinterpret the scriptures, but apply the truth and the power of the scriptures. And I believe that when we take time to apply scripture, it helps us to navigate through the issues of our time. And I found that the Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, that righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Proverbs is one of those books that it has chapters and verses with broad themes that can be applied to several different areas of our lives. Um, when we read this particular verse, we see two clear statements. This verse, like many others in Proverbs, provide a stark contrast between the statements. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Now, these two statements are easy to understand when they stand alone, but if we treat them as two statements instead of one truth, then we miss the wisdom of the proverb. The word but is inserted there. It's a conjunction word and connects the context and the interpretation of the verse. These two statements are in effect at the same time time. Most of us battle with sin on a personal level every day. We're tempted to say the wrong thing, think the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, and we wrestle morally and try to do the right thing each day of our lives. We're in a constant state of flux, and we have the proverbial devil, not the proverbial, but the literal. We have the literal devil sitting on one shoulder and an angel sitting on the other. But if we take a look on a more macro level and we look at things as where scripture looks at it in this particular verse, and we see that the scales are tipping back and forth between righteousness and sin. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Is it, is it possible to see uh, tremendous success while also experiencing hurtful failures? As a nation, we tend to, to value growth in particular areas as a barometer for overall strength as a country. We say the words, the state of our union is strong. Wall Street is booming. 
While our streets are rife with violence, brutality, racism, and civil unrest. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Yeah, the markets are up, but our moral compass is cracked. We can't look to a surging economy to fix the rot that is in our hearts when it comes to racism. Our nation's history and the healing that is that so many communities need can only be found through love. The love of Jesus Christ, the love that is exemplified, the unconditional love that is exemplified in the scriptures. Here's the truth. Black history, white history, and every other nation's history that's been touched by war or any kind of conquest will forever be intertwined. The pain, the suffering, the progress, and the frustrations will always speak to our nation's shared past. Dr. Martin Luther King said it this way. He said, we may have all come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. Think about it. The transgressors and the transgressed now live among each other. This new strange but real relationship speaks to a simple truth that if we take the time to remove the stain and the reminders of racism for black people, it'll also remove the stain and reminders of racism for white people. Healing for blacks also means healing for whites. The transgressors and the transgressed are healed through the removal of any offensive remembrance. Now, talking about the removal of Confederate statues, removing of statues of known slave owners and auctioneers, regardless of their status or regardless of their role, is a step in removing the stains of racism in our country. Remember, righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Museums and educational institutions have carefully documented our history, its pioneers, its founding fathers, the contributors, and, and even the, the oppressed in their wake. However, our public places should not honor the vices of our past for public display, but rather portray our shared progress with new statues embodying that progress. Too many people have fought and died so that our children would never have to face the kind of vitriol and hate that we witnessed in Charlottesville. And I'll put it to you this way. If the defense of that statue called for the violence that we saw, then it should absolutely be removed and others like it. American history books and historical eyewitnesses testify to the fact that the Confederate statues were not there prior to the Civil War of 1861 to 1865. These statues did not show up until a generation had passed and blacks were freed. Many of the memorials or these new Confederate statues were dedicated in the early 20th century, decades after the Civil War, and have strong relationship with the campaigns to promote and justify newly formed Jim Crow laws in the South. Let's be clear on our history. The Southern Confederates lost the war. The Northern Union won the war. And the North and the South were at war for a number one reason, slavery. 
President Lincoln remarked that either we will either legalize slavery across the entire country or remove it entirely. And the conscience of America woke up and demanded that slavery be abolished and that the Southern Confederates lost. The very statue that was being protested in Charlottesville, ironically, was the statue of Robert Lee, who was a soldier who refused to fight for President Lincoln. He didn't want to fight against his own race of people, and he defected to the Southern Confederates. But at the end of the war, he himself stated that the Confederate flag should not be seen or used anymore because it had proven to be a symbol of division and civil unrest. What does that say to us today? From that time, the Confederate flag had disappeared for almost three or four generations. This country has gone back and forth between progress and prohibition, between righteousness and reproach. Just when freedom is granted, a new legislative shackle presents itself. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The scriptures give us clear and simple, yet challenging precedents to follow and apply. I'm going to give you two words, repentance and forgiveness. In this current social climate, it becomes a big problem to call for forgiveness and reconciliation until we literally change the landscape of what we see in our communities. The changing of our public landscape is indicative of our nation's repentance for the sins of the past. We must acknowledge that statues that commemorate accomplishments for some can also adversely denigrate progress for others. I believe that it is this shared sensitivity that will help to you truly unite us all. We have to continue to pray for the unity of our nation and its communities. Let us see each other through the eyes of forgiveness and equality. If we really want the conversation to change and you want folks to stop talking about racism, then let's really turn a new page and let's really turn that page together and forge a new future for our children. I shared a post recently from one of our pastors in Brooklyn, Pastor Heston Williams of Purpose Life Church. And he asked an important question. What do we tell our children? How do we explain to them what's happening in our, on our streets, in our communities? And for our Christian homes and Christian families, our Christian leaders need to be vocal at this time more than any. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. What side are you on? Righteousness or reproach? If we continue to allow reproach to stand, in our communities, if we allow reproach to continue to stand in our churches. The protests are peaceful now, but the tide will change for people who no longer stand for it won't be peaceful any longer. Righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Thanks for tuning in. For this episode of Conversations with Selwyn, I believe the dialogue about our history and our conscience 
is at an all-time high. I pray that our nation's government and its leaders, the leader of this country, will exercise the necessary conscience and caution in helping to unite our nation again. God bless you all. And yeah, God bless the United States of America.